The president just signed an executive order in the hopes of restoring some reproductive rights that were eliminated when the Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade. What we're witnessing wasn't a constitutional judgment. It was an exercise in raw political power. I reported when the court ruled in the Dobbs case something that stood out to me in the majority opinion. Justice Alito said, quote, women don't lack electoral or political power. He was basically saying if women don't like this ruling, they have other remedies to correct it. And today, the president basically called that a challenge to voters and said in order to change anything because of the math in Congress, two more pro-choice senators and a pro-choice House need to be elected in November so that Congress has the votes necessary to pass a new law to federally re-establish the rights that were given under Roe versus Wade. In the meantime, the fact is there's not a lot the president can do. And even with today's executive order, there are questions about how this will actually be enforced. Regardless, the president focused on four main areas today. The first is an order for the Department of Health and Human Services to take actions in several areas, including to protect and expand access to abortion care by expanding access to FDA-approved abortion pills and making sure women have full rights to an abortion if found to be medically necessary in an emergency situation by issuing guidance to all American physicians that explains their responsibilities under the Emergency Medical Treatment and Labor Act and expanding access through the Affordable Care Act, through Medicare and Medicaid, to the full range of reproductive health services, including emergency contraception and IUDs. The second action is an order to the attorney general to gather a bunch of attorneys to provide free legal representation for patients, providers, and third parties who are seeking an abortion or providing abortions. The order specifically addresses legally representing women who are trying to travel out of state to get an abortion if it's illegal in their state. The third action is about privacy and does several things, including orders the Federal Trade Commission to take steps to protect consumer privacy and directs Health and Human Services under HIPAA to remind healthcare professionals that with limited exceptions, they are not required to share patient personal medical information with anyone including the state or even law enforcement. And the last action is to establish an interagency task force for reproductive health care access to coordinate federal policy making and ensure safety of patients, providers, and third parties to protect their security when seeking reproductive health care.